you're listening to the Digitally Irresistible Podcast, where we cover the optimization of digital technologies and irresistible people. Brought to you by i Each episode features someone who sheds a little more light on the ins and outs of delivering a great employee and customer experience that has a measurable impact on the business. And now, here's today's guest. Hey there, welcome to another episode of the Digitally Irresistible Podcast. I'm your host, Bernie Borges. Today's guest is Jim Down. Welcome, Jim. Hey, Bernie. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you here, Jim. Looking forward to our conversation. Jim, you run two sites for i in the Philippines, and you oversee four client programs, and you're responsible for the well-being of hundreds of full-time employees. In your 19-year career at i you've been consistent on two key pillars of customer service excellence, which is why you recently won an i Hero Award. So on this episode, Jim, I want you to share those two core pillars, which have been your North Star for the past 19 years. But first, Jim, as I think you know, let's begin with your introduction. Why don't you tell us your current role at i and when you started? Sure, Bernie. I'm currently Senior Director of Operations. I'm based in Davao, which is in Mindanao, the southernmost region here in the Philippines. Um, my journey with uh, i began in June of 2003. Okay. Well, again, uh, at the time of this recording, 19 years ago, coming up on that big 20th anniversary Mm -hmm. soon. So uh, that is is just fantastic. Why don't you give us a little more detail? That's a pretty big responsibility. Give us a little more detail on the responsibilities in your current role. Two things that I take very, very responsible, and that's our our people and our customers. And and I'll share a little more about that when we get into into my background. Um, But I do have a responsibility for managing four programs, as you said, um, and all the, the folks that come along with those programs, as well as the two sites that we have in Davao, um, ensuring that the sites um, are, are properly maintained. I work closely with our facilities team, and I work closely with the managers of the other programs, which are not directly under me, to make sure that everybody has what they need to be successful and that the environment that we create for our team um, is conducive to good morale, um, welfare, and in support of our customers. Yeah. Now, when we were preparing for this podcast recording, Jim, you gave me some of your background and you told me that early in your career at i there were some values that were instilled in you by yeah. the people or maybe an individual or two that you were reporting to. So why don't you share those values and the impact that they have had on your career at i Sure, Bernie. I would love to share that. You know, I I made a personal decision to move to the Philippines in 2003. Um, I'm a retired Marine. I have a significant background in uh, training and education. I have a Master of Science degree in education. And actually, at the time when I moved to the Philippines in 2003, I was a a licensed teacher. Um, But I did make the decision to move to the Philippines. Um, Cyber City Teleservices was an upcoming a call center here in the Philippines. They had a position uh, that was open that that was in line with what my skill set was. Um, I applied and I, I came in for an interview. I interviewed with a, a couple of senior leaders and actually with the CEO of the company. And I, I think the thing that impressed me with the interview, the interview was that I was not being interviewed or or assessed on my skills or my experience. I was being assessed on my values And do my values fit in with the values um, that the company had? Now, back then, it was Cyber City Teleservices. Um, The company was acquired by i in in 2012, and I had my start back in 2003. And when I started with the company, uh, back then, the call center industry was new uh, to the Philippines. And Cyber City Teleservices had a 30-day training program that was designed to provide basic call center skills to prepare you to go on to product training, nesting, and then into uh, finally into production. So I managed that program and that involved recruiting um, and training. And back then we would scour the entire Philippines uh, for for talent. Uh, And we'd actually fly the folks up to our facilities in Clark. I started up up in Clark, which is about 700 nautical miles um, north of where we are here in Davao. Um, we we provide board lodging for these folks for three or four months until they were, they got a paycheck. They were able to be stabilized on their own. 
Um, it was a, a great, a great, great thing. And during that interview, uh, I spent some time with the CEO of the company. There's two things that you need to know if you want to be successful and you want us to be successful as an organization. And those two things are the customer is king and the success is in our people, meaning that we bend over backwards to take care of our customers and we bend over twice backwards to take care of our people. And I, I've lived those values to this day. Um, very, very important to me. Optimize your customer experience through digital transformation with i -Corps. From robotic process automation to conversational AI, we're leading the way in digital CX. Smile with i -Corps. Learn more at i .com. Yeah, okay. Um, that's fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. Now, as I, men as I mentioned when I was teeing up that question for you, you shared that that has had a lasting impact on you. And in, in these recent times, last, let's call it a couple of years, where we've had so much of the model has shifted to working at home, how, how are you living out those core values with a work at home employee base? You, you know, Bernie, that, that's a great question. And, and at first, when we started with the whole work at home uh, movement, when, when you know, COVID first hit, it was a challenge, but we've overcome that challenge. Our, our work at home team is as if they were sitting here in the office with me. Uh, we take advantage of the technology that is available to us. Our work at home agents have web cameras. They're highly involved with our in-office agents. Um, we go. We actually go out to their houses. You know, if we have one of our work at home agents who was, for example, agent of the month, we're going to get in the car. We're going to drive out to that agent's house, and we're going to pre present that agent uh, with an award. Um, so there is absolutely no difference between caring to a team of work at home agents and caring to a team of work at, in the office agents. We make it one one team. So you really, really focused on on just making sure that employees you know, feel the love, meaning, you know, they, that they're cared for, you know, you sweat every detail. I remember you talking about that, Jim, there was an example that you used. Do you remember the example you used where you were actually walking through the office and you noticed something? You, does that trigger your memory on something that you, <laughs> yeah. you, yeah. Well, you want to share that example? Yeah, yeah, it does. I have a responsibility for my people. Um, and one of the main responsibilities is that I provide them an environment that is conducive to their welfare. Um, I, I typically walk around the facility uh, with my phone and I take pictures of things. If I see something that's out of line, something that's not in place, I'll take a picture and I'll forward that picture to the department that's responsible for having that, that resolved. Um, I'm known for that. Uh, I, I constantly walk throughout the facilities. I constantly talk with our agents, making sure that they have what they want, what they need um, to be successful. And I, I take great ownership in that and I take great pride in that, uh, really. And I have no doubt that uh, the people on your team appreciate that very much about you, Jim. So uh, that's a great example. Now, you mentioned earlier that uh, you were a U.S. Marine. Thank you for your service, by the way. Thank you, Bernie. Um, and, and, I, and I believe that you also shared with me that there were some core values from that season of your life that you also have carried into your i -Corps career. And so maybe you can share those as sort of advice that you like to impart on all Icorians. Yes, and and it's it's not only advice to to be successful, you know, in your career, but to be successful in life. And these three these three values were instilled in me um, from the Marine Corps: honor, commitment, and courage. And when I say honor, I mean you know doing what's right, holding yourself and your team to the highest standards, um, being responsible. If you have obligations, living up to those obligations, whether they're at work or whether they're at home. Uh, commitment. Take that commitment. Take that ownership when you're interacting with that customer. Especially take that ownership when you're working with your people. Take care of them. And courage. You know, Bernie, when you go through uh, honor and, and commitment, there's a, lots of obstacles. And sometimes uh, you may struggle in navigating through those obstacles. Have the courage to recognize that struggle. Take ownership of that, course correct, and get back on track. If you do that, you will be successful at work and you will be successful at home in your family life. Yeah. I love the fact that you characterize these, these core principles, core values, honor, commitment, and courage as, as virtues to be successful in life. 
And of course, work is a big part of our life. Yes. And so if we're successful, if we're successfully holding those core values as, as our foundation and how we interact with everyone in our life, our family, our friends, our peers, our bosses, our customers, then we're successful in every aspect uh, of our life. And, right. you know, as you, as you said, the courage part, sometimes things don't go the way we plan, right? So right. just having the courage to acknowledge that and then simply, like you said, owning it. That's such right. great advice. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Bernie. I think, you know, Jim, that we always like to, to end these conversations on the fun question, right? And that is, <laughs> we like to ask, you know, when you're not working, Jim, what do you like to do for fun? You, you know, Bernie, that a great question. And I've, viewed many of your podcasts and I see lots of responses. You know, there's lots of things that I, I like to do in my free time, but I think the, the one thing that is most important to me, um, and it provides for that work-life balance. Every day I make it a point when I, when I leave the office, I go home, I change into my workout gear and I work out. Um, I spend about an hour, an hour and a half every day I'm working out. That does several things. One is it keeps me fit. You know, as I'm as I'm aging, you know, I'm getting a little bit older in life. Um, I plan to be around for a while, so I want to be healthy to do that. Um, but also, it clears out my mind. Um, it allows me to uh, reflect upon the day, what I have coming tomorrow, what I can do better tomorrow, and it just kind of separates that. Okay, I'm out of work now. Now I'm going to shift into my family life. Um, it just creates a great work balance bridge, if, if, if you may. Yeah. That's what I enjoy doing. You know, I love the fact that you consider working out fun. Uh, I, I think that's great. And I, sh I share that same, that same sentiment. Uh, I do the same, except m my workout gym is early in the morning before my work day, as opposed to the end of my work day, just the way that I prefer to do it. But I love the fact that you do characterize it as fun and you characterize it as good for your mental health. Yes. And, and I think that's a great way to, uh, to really think about it. So Jim, I just want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to uh, join me here on this episode of the Digitally Irresistible podcast. It's truly an honor to spend this time with you. Congratulations on your upcoming 20th anniversary with i -Corps. Thank you so much for the contribution that you make to the people that you impact, that you've impacted for 19 years, almost 20. Uh, and the impact that that's having on our business because of the relationships that we're building with the customers that are calling into those talented agents that, that work on your team that, again, you support with honor, commitment, and courage. Thank you so much, Jim. Ernie, thank you. And I appreciate um, giving the opportunity to sit here with you and, and have this great conversation. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Digitally Irresistible podcast, where we cover the optimization of digital technologies and irresistible people, delivering a great employee and customer experience that has a measurable impact on the business. Brought to you by i -Corps. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast player so you don't miss future episodes.